Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the Rock 64 single board computer from Pine64. I picked this up from Ameridroid and I wanted to test out the new build of Laka available. Now there are three available models of this board. They all contain different amounts of RAM. They have a one gigabyte version, two gigabyte version, and a four gigabyte version. They're also reasonably priced. The one gigabyte version is $29.95, the two is $39.95, and the four is $49.95. All three of these models do 4K video playback, and it does a pretty decent job at it. The CPU is a Rockchip RK3328 at 1.5 GHz. It's a quad-core ARM Cortex A53 64-bit CPU. The GPU is lacking a little bit in my opinion. It's an ARM Mali 450 MP2, but it is capable of 4K. One of the downsides to these boards is they do not contain Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but dongles are pretty cheap. So here's a side view. It uses a barrel jack for power and they recommend 5 volt, 3 amp. We also have a full size HDMI port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving around to the USB and Ethernet, we do get gigabit Ethernet, two USB 2.0 ports, and one USB 3.0 port. The board itself actually has 62 GPIO pins. It has the Pi 2 pin out for the 40 pins and the old school Raspberry Pi 1 with the 22 pins. The operating system can be run from a micro SD card, but they also added the option for an eMMC module. Now an eMMC module is a bit more expensive, but a lot faster than an SD card. If you do end up getting one, you'll have a marking on the bottom. As you can see, this says 4G, that's for four gigabytes of RAM. And we have our SD card slot exactly where the Pi's SD card slot is. Speaking of the Pi, pretty much the same form factor except for the extra 22 GPIO pins, the three USBs instead of four on the Pi, but we do get one USB 3.0 and I think that's a good trade-off. And on the side, we have a barrel jack for power instead of a micro USB. So I did test this in a few Raspberry Pi cases and it does fit. The flirt case unfortunately will not fit, but you have to be careful because of the barrel jack. Some cases have a cutout that's just small enough for a micro USB cable and the barrel jack will not fit but some of them are cut out a little bigger and it works fine. For my testing here with Laka, I did install a heatsink from an Asus Tinker board. It's 40 by 40 by 40. It'll definitely keep this chip cool. Here's a quick look with an eMMC module installed. I will be running Laka from an SD card. The only performance gains you will get if you use an eMMC with Laka is boot time. Emulation performance will not increase from using an eMMC module. Before we get into the operating system, I want to show you Pine64's installer. It's really nice. It's based on Etcher. Let's take a look. This is available for Mac, Linux, or Windows. I'm running it on Mac right now because I had this available. We'll go to Download Image. Choose your board. We're going to go for the Rock 64. As you can see, they have Android 7.1, Android 7.1 TV, some Debian, some Ubuntu, Diet Pi down below. Kodi is not listed here, but there is an available build of Kodi. You can download it from their website. This is a really nice installer. It is based on Etcher. You're just gonna click on the image you want. It's gonna download it. It's gonna automatically flash it to the SD card you choose. And you're ready to go. So let's go ahead and move over to Laka. I'm gonna be testing SNES, PlayStation 1, N64, FBA, Arcade, Game Boy Advance. All right guys, so here we are with the Rock 64 four gigabyte version of the board. We're running Laka 2.1 specifically built for this board. As you can see, we got four cores. This does have a Mali GPU and the Laka version is Rock chip, Rock64.arm 2.1. With a Linux kernel of 4.4. This is the four gigabyte model, but it only shows three gigabytes. I noticed that Laka doesn't really show the correct amount of memory here in a lot of systems. So there's a lot of stuff that's gonna run on this board. There's a lot of stuff that's not going to run on this board. We do have a dual core Mali MP450 GPU. So PSP is pretty much out of the question for now. I am using a PS4 controller connected with a USB cable. It just works right out of the box. I also tested an Xbox One controller and an 8-Bit-O controller. Make sure I have my hotkey set up. First game we're gonna run is a Neo Geo game called Blazing Star. One of my favorite Neo Geo games. Let's get right into some gameplay here. I do have the Neo Geo BIOS installed also. As you can see, we're getting the Neo Geo boot screen here. 
I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this so you can see how this performs. I wanted to get into a more active part of the level. There's a lot of enemies on screen here and it seems to be running really good. I played this a lot on the Raspberry Pi 3 and I can tell you right now that it doesn't slow down as much on this as it does on the Pi 3. Especially when we get to this first boss here. So it's working really well. On the Pi 3, when we get here, it lags out a bunch. And it did this in the arcade, but it wasn't as much as the Pi 3 gives us. And I can tell you that this is not lagging as much as the Pi 3. Still definitely playable on the Pi. But this seems to be running it a little better. We do have a more powerful CPU and GPU. Next up, I want to test another arcade game. We're going to be playing The Simpsons 2 player. We're going to be using the same FBA core. It should run perfectly. So we do have full speed emulation. The sound is really good. It seems to be working great. Now, there are literally thousands and thousands of main games that will be playable on this board. But the main version of Killer Instinct will not run on this board. I can guarantee you that. It's just not powerful enough to pull that off. I also wanted to test out Game Boy Advance in this video. We're going to be playing Castlevania Area of Sorrow. I'm not sure how other people felt about this game, but I really loved it. It's one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. Running very smooth. Graphics look great. So Game Boy Advance shouldn't be a problem for the Rock 64 running Laka. I'll just go through here a little bit longer. I suspected it would run Game Boy Advance, NES, SNES, you know, emulators like that flawlessly. There are tons of systems out there that can. I'm sure everybody's going to ask, will it run N64? We're going to test out 007 GoldenEye, and it doesn't run very well. I have tried both cores. There's Parallel and Moopin64. I am using Moopin64 because it seems to run a little better here, and I have all the settings on as low as you can go. So right off the bat, I'm sure you hear how bad the sound is. And if you've played GoldenEye 007, either emulated or on an original N64, you know this is running really slow. Hopefully with time, performance will increase, but for now, a lot of these N64 games are going to be unplayable. I mean... So SNES can pretty much be emulated on anything nowadays. I have an Android watch that runs SNES almost at full speed. It's pretty crazy, but I'm going to test it here. Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate. I got a feeling that it's going to run perfectly. I absolutely suck at any kind of Mortal Kombat game. It's never been my thing. I got destroyed in the first round here. Hopefully I can cheap out and keep freezing it. But it's running really well. Sweet. I knew I could cheap out on this one. 
Finally, we're going to be testing some PlayStation 1 games. I know everybody's going to be asking about PSP. I can't even get Burnout Legends to launch correctly. I'm sure there are a few games that'll run in PSP, but I haven't tested many. So let's test out PlayStation 1. We're going to do Tekken 3. Round one. Had to choose another cheap character here, Eddie Gordo. One of the cheapest in the Tekken universe. I've just never really gotten into Mortal Kombat or Tekken. It was more of Marvel vs. Capcom. You know, Capcom games like Street Fighter and things like that. But seeing how Tekken 3 is running here on the Rock 64, a lot of these PlayStation 1 games will be fully playable. You might run into a few that don't perform well, but that'll be far and few in between. So that's pretty sweet. Rock 64 handles a lot of these emulators. I wish it did N64 and PSP a little better, but looking at the specs on paper, I knew it wasn't going to handle it as well as some other single board computers. Like I mentioned, maybe later on down the road, some optimizations can be put in place with this lock -a build for Rock 64, and it'll work better. But until then, this is what we have. I think it's pretty good for a first release. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these Rock 64 boards to mess around with, I'll leave links in the description to Amazon and Ameridroid. Like you saw with the Pine64 installer, there are a lot of operating systems available. There's also a fully functional Kodi build that's available. I wanted to do a video on it, but might be a few days before I can get to it. If you guys could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.